Hi everyone, this is Eric from P2 Design and this is how I animate clothes in Blender. For this demonstration, I will be using Moxie, a character I've rigged and animated in Blender. Here you can see her attack animation. This character rig is entirely custom, but it's pretty close to what you could have if you were using a Rigify, for example. On top of this, I created a specific rig for the sleeves, trying to make them as natural as possible, the main controller bones allowing me to move the whole sleeve, while I can refine and tweak the shape of it using those little tweaker bones. The skirt or dress is using exactly the same mechanism. I'm sure that as you see this, you want to know how to do it, and you can learn how to create this specific rig in this video. And if you are new to rigging or you want to take your rigging skill to the next level, you can follow my rigging course, The Art of Effective Rigging. Animating clothes is all about follow through, and I will get back to this a little later on. But basically, I will not pose the cloth during the blocking stage unless I need them to shape my character. For this specific character and this specific animation, shaping the sleeves during the attack was very important. But when it comes to the dress or skirt, you can see the legs clipping through the fabric. Because animating the cloth is generally something I do last. To summarize, you may pose the cloth if you do believe or do feel it's very important for the clarity of the silhouette of your character. Otherwise, keep it for the very last pass of animation. Here you can see the result of the blocking stage. You can see that I have posed the sleeves because they are very important in the readability of the motion. And it's also the opportunity for me to create smears. But if you now focus on the skirt or dress, you can see that it doesn't move super naturally. As I know, I will be animating it at the very last stage of this animation. I haven't animated the ropes around her chest, nor the sleeves during the last move, because the motion is going to be subtle and mostly overlapping motion. So this is something I will address later on. I know a lot of people don't like to use the graph editor, and you don't really need it to create this kind of animation. Here I created this simple motion that could be the hips of my character, and now I will animate this bone chain. And this is exactly the same mechanism for the dress. In this specific case, it's just a chain of three bones. When animating this kind of asset, you have to play your animation. Here I can see that my bones are moving fast to the right, so I will turn them to the left. This is what we called a dragging motion. The bone on top is leading the animation and it drags the other bones. The amount of dragging depends on the speed. Now, as it moves the opposite way, I will just cancel the rotation by pressing Alt-R and then rotate my bone the opposite way. Once I've created those two poses, I will play the animation several times to have a feeling about it. And it feels the clothes is changing direction a bit too rapidly. So I will simply add a key in between to favorize the previous position. And now it already feels a little better. As the route stops, I need my cloth to go further. So I will go several frames after the stop and rotate my cloth to the left. As I play the animation, it feels a bit too slow, so I will simply offset a bit the key. And it already feels way better. The last thing you need to think of whenever you are animating cloth, ponytails, ropes, whatever, is to add a bit of swing at the very end. My technique is to go several frames later, then cancel the rotation and rotate the opposite way a little bit. Then I will go a little further and repeat the process and each time I will reduce the amount of rotation I will be adding to the bow. And honestly, most of the time I will stop there. Now, if you want to go a little further with your polishing, you can open the graph editor. What I advise you is to simply scale the angles of your curve, scale them up if you want to hold the motion, if you want to keep it dragging, or scale them down whenever you want to accelerate the switch of orientation of your bow. But I wouldn't go further than that. You could, but the amount of time you will spend for the value you will get is not worth it. When you are working on a short chain like this one, 
you can pose all the following bones at once using individual origins. And the process is super simple. You just counterpose them or slightly delay their rotation compared to the first bone in the chain. As the first bone in the chain starts to rotate to the right, this is the moment where I will key those two bones to the left. And generally speaking, what will happen is that you will pose them in between two keys of the previous bone in the chain. So if you watch the keys of the bone called cloth 1, you will see that the cloth 2 and 3 will mostly be keyed in between those keys. And the intensity of the rotation is based on the previous bone in the chain. As it damped in the end, those are damping too. I totally admit this animation doesn't look perfect at all. It looks a bit stiff. But yet, in 3 minutes, that looks perfectly decent. In production, I definitely spend a little more time on it. But you have the base process. And if you want to further learn animation in Blender, I advise you to get my course alive. It's the best rated and most thoughtful Blender animation course available to date. So basically, once my character was fully animated, I just spent time animating the skirt straight forward. The straightforward method is not about blocking, then refining your animation, but it's just animating along the way. And this is how I generally animate clothes, robes, hairs for my character in a rather conspiracy. If you'd like, I could show you how we can use simulations to do this kind of animation. Just leave your request in the comment section below. And if you like my content, please give it a like and follow me. That will really help me growing the channel. So once I'm done with the main motion of the dress, this is where I will fix any clipping issues. And the process is pretty straightforward. So when I was animating the main motion of the cloth, I wasn't wondering or caring about whether it was clipping or not. And then I will just scrub through the animation, and as soon as I see any clipping issue, I will fix the shape of the cloth using the tweaker bones. To do that, you need your rig to allow this kind of fine tweaking. And I've shown you in the previous video, you will find the link in the description, how to create this kind of rig. And then my advice is just to input as less key as possible. When you see a clipping issue, adjust the pose of the bones every three or four frames and then scrub through the animation. And if you ever see another moment where it's clipping, especially in between, only adjust the needed bone. This way, with less keyframes, you will keep some kind of smooth motion and smooth transition, and you will prevent your bones from jittering during the animation. So in the end, as you can see, creating believable cloth animation doesn't rely on crazy technologies or crazy technique. It's just about layering motion and details upon your good animation. The most important is the motion and animation of your character. And then the cloth will follow. This is the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very very soon.